Hallo. I hope I'm waiting here. Oh my. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, most welcome today. First uh, and foremost, which I have to tell you is a little bit about my background, which is not there in biodata. I am coming from a vernacular medium, variety medium school, and therefore my English grammar, you have to excuse me if I make some funny mistakes in that. Today's message is most important for you, and therefore I'm here. Second thing is, we are talking about visual arts. Generally, what we know about visual arts is, can I have slides? <coughs> Okay, what we know about visual art generally is the visuals which are created from so many years by so many artists in which we include visual arts means paintings, sculptures, architecture and so on. And then what comes is famous artists and the isms, you know, like for example from realism to surrealism to photorealism and so on. The moment the technology and the production methods have changed and came into existence, slowly the visual art has changed as well. And in which journey we have forgotten we, what exactly the visual art has contributed. As a child, I was also quite curious to understand what exactly visual art has given to us in, in form of, I know many famous artists, I know there are paintings, there are sculptures, there are architectures, and exhibitions happen and People get famous and paintings are really sold on a high price. And that's what generally we have a notion about visual art as a fundamental. You know. And later on, what technology has taken few things from visual art and has made human life easier. That's all we know in nutshell of this large history of visual art so far. What we are trying to understand here, can you see this slide? more closely. Is it a sculpture? Looks like a sculpture. As we go a little more closer, there are signs. This is what is the link, what we have forgotten. These are the slides from the Bimbitka case from India, very much from India. Almost of like thousands of years ago, when man used to not talk, but used to just draw and make some signs on the walls. And we have forgotten the sign slowly developed into a language of sign. And then about, about say, 100,000 years ago, we started making verbal signs and communicating with each other. Yeah? It took about 60,000 years for us to come to the level of word. We have forgotten that. And really, there is no source that by which we can understand this. You know? So a man has taken a long time to come to simply a, a proposition of a word, and then sentence and tense formulated. So actual spoken language took a long time. And then, but simultaneously and parallelly, the visual was going on. The planning, the visual works as a tool or a language itself, a complete language of planning and mapping and hunting, we have just understood about it and we have looked at it as a black magic or something like that. But moreover, which is simultaneously or parallelly developing, is a language of written sign. That is how it goes further. And you can see that. I, I, I suppose you know this image. yeah. Although it's a representative concept, but there is an animal and there are signs. It's in this valley about 5,000 years ago. So script, we can say by evidence, just born about, say, 6,000 years ago. As compared to a spoken language, it is so late in a way. That means it's the most mature, it's the most mature creation of a human being. And that's exactly what I mean to say here today, that we have forgotten that how visual art was responsible for the discovery of a script for us. 
not just this. I'm taking case study as an Indian culture and Indian script studies. But all over the world, it's something same. Although the script system formulated differently, like phonetics and alphabetic and syllabic, and on the other hand, to East, more pictography, whatever. But they are all written scripts and through which the whole world communicates. And that's one of the most fundamental, profound contribution of a visual art where we have never paid attention to. And it is not an invention of one person. It's an unanimous. Just imagine logically, can someone invent a script? No, not possible. It's a unanimous society who accepts those signs and came to a certain values to it. And they decide from now onwards, we will call this particular letter X a value. As we go further, we see in Indus Valley, and particularly in India, how it has developed. Something similar also happened all over the world. Yeah? This is a set of Indus Valley scripts. But the point here I wanted to say that the system, system, the visual art, and then sign, and then the script, and the script system, this script system is very much we are aware. By the way, how many from the audience knows uh, Hindi language? Can, can you raise hand? Yeah? Can you read and write? Wow, that's great. That's really great. Congratulations. Because when we know, I'm not just trying to be patriotic or saying as an Indian that do you know Hindi language. It's fantastic. We will try to understand from Indus Valley, I will not claim, but our structure of the script or the system is quite similar, which is based on phonetic. Spoken. Even today, most of the languages are spoken. Yes, all of them. All of them are spoken languages. And to interpret spoken language, the script which India has deciphered is something amazing as compared to the other systems of scripts. As pictographic or ideographic, or is also known as logographic script. And on the other hand, a few 26 syllables and working with those, with varying phonetic values for one symbol or the letter. In India, this is Brahmi script, third century BC Brahmi script. Looked like a simple cross. So you can imagine how profound and simple the sign was. This is letter K from third century BC Brahmi. And how it has gone further? About 25 times it has changed and came to a contemporary letter which you and me can realize and you can recognize it. I suppose we can recognize this letter form, right? This is curve. So it has changed about 25 times. The entire metamorphosis of the visual form we can still see with an evidence. The issue here is the values underneath the letter curve has remained as it is for 3,000 years. Moreover, the value of vowels and consonant system, which is one of the most scientific, and even today, although it's, we found it a little complex to learn, but it's a complex input, but it's extraordinary simple output. So here we are. Have you seen our currency note, and have you seen how many languages are there? You know, we have about 10 scripts officially, can be you know, used for more than 26 languages. On our note, we find less, but 26 official languages. India is the only country where we are discovering new script. I'm not saying inventing new script. For example, Manipuri is newly discovered script. We don't know. You know? For example, there are, there are scripts for Tulu language. So this is the only country where the world is becoming more and more globalized. This is the only country where we find the new scripts, not the new one, which are suppressed or are not seen this world for about 200 to 300 years, they are coming up again. Because to, to have the script in existence in today's world required a print, required a font or a type to exist and to carry forward that to the next generation. So some of the scripts has really were not having the types of fonts and therefore they remain into under, underneath or into shell. And most of the languages then started using Roman or Latin scripts. So India is a country where recent number says that more than 800 languages and 34 scripts. I myself also have seen all 34, but we at least know that 11 scripts exist. So it's one of the richest, script-wise richest country in the world. But 
Apart from that, what I want to make a point here is our all scripts follows the same system that is vowel, consonants, and ligatures, which are made out of it. That is what is also known as Jodakshar or Juktakshar, the joint letters, the joint vowels and, and, and consonants, you know, cluster uh, consonants. Yeah? We are here. Do we know a little bit about India in two sense as far as scripts are concerned? There are more than 1,20,000 newspapers published every day. That means someone must be spending money to print them. That means somebody must be reading them. And that means the scripts are alive. And that's what excited me a lot. You know, To tell you a small story, when I was like 20 and first time suddenly born to a Western country, and I planted up for five days in, in Paris. I wanted to share that experience, how I progressively realize the value of Indian script, not because I'm an Indian or not because I'm coming from vernacular school and all that. Yeah, I was sitting in Paris in a, in a, in a restaurant. I met a friend and uh, my friend was worried that I, after some conversation, he realized that I'm going to leave uh, Paris in three days and uh, I don't know French. He said, how am I going to survive here? You, do, you don't know French. Okay, he, he pulled the uh, tissue paper and he wrote five important sentences in French and by using the Roman Latin script. I said, look, I'm really not so good even reading English in Roman script, you see? And you are giving me challenges of such a long spellings of French language, how I'm going to simply read it? He said, okay, I'll recite for you and all that. I said, it's very difficult for me to remember. And there was a silence for a long time. And my friend was really, really worried because not a single sentence of French language and how you're going to survive for three more days here. I said, okay, we'll find it out in Indian attitude like chalta hai. I'll take care of myself somehow, you know, I'll, I'll make a gesture of language, give me bread, give me this, where this goes and where this road goes and all that. He said, yeah, fine, you are open, but it's very important to also know the French language. Again, a big silence. I said, okay, I have an idea. You just pronounce me the sentence which you found it most important and he pronounced the first and most important sentence was which to sort the problem is Paolo who's angry so that was a question Paolo who's angry do you know English I said yeah okay that's that's a good sentence let me write it down and I wrote it in Devanagari and I wrote it in Devanagari believe me I was struggling to simply get a correct pronunciation by understanding the Roman script and when I wrote it in Devanagari, I said, wow. And, and my friend said, wow, you can now pronounce it so well. I said, I do not have to even now remember because it's, it's gone in. You know, that's the facet of knowing a phonetic script or which is scientifically also called alpha syllabary system of scripts. You know, so that's one of the greatest assets where I wanted to really, you know, make you all, you know, point it out that if you know Hindi and if you know Devanagari, fantastic, hold down to it. It will really allow you a lot of things wherever you are going, in any part of the world you are going, it will help you in this manner. You know, and I said the purity of the script, the scientific aspect of the script, if in those days there was no mail, there was no, there was no mobile, nothing, and then you just, I, I said, if I fax this paper to my mom, she will read it in the same manner the way I did it. So the great asset of the Devanagari script is basically what you speak, that you write. If you write wrongly, it will be read wrongly. If you write correctly, it will be read correctly. Innocently, but correctly. You know, Devanagari today utilized for five different languages in India. As you know, these are official, like Nepali, Hindi, Sanskrit, Marathi, and Konkani. So you can just take out any newspaper of Nepali newspaper and you can read if you know Devanagari. It will, might not mean you quickly, but you will be able to read that very, very swiftly, that's for sure. Let's understand this culture in two sense and how it goes further. Why I wanted to again and again stress not just the script system, because script is an interdisciplinary idea of a human being, but visual art is extremely, you know, responsible for its existence today. That's why. And let's understand how the visual language transformed into a script, in particularly in Indian scripts. I'm, I'm showing you a quick journey of, or the visual grammar of uh, Devanagari, which you can, you can see. Although you can't read it, but 
If you can read it, nothing like it. But if you can see, you'll come to know that there is one single form and there are four ways joineries. Most of Indian scripts has a similar logic of visual. And then there is a syllabary form. So you actually learn a very less letter forms, but the combinations and permutation and combination takes you to more than about 26,000 graphic forms, which you know. And if you know how to write Hindi into Devanagari, that means you know 26,000 letter forms. Hello, I'm not talking about kanji. You don't have to separately remember them. I know, but maybe you are not aware about it. You see? Let's have a look at this. Now to specially motivate this particular thought or a message, what we have done from last 20 years and many students from my college where I teach started coming together and they also found that it's so important to really preserve this particular script culture and moreover spread it and also to motivate others to particularly to youngsters what they can do is not a single person job. So many people came together and they formulated an organization which is a non-governmental, uh, non-profit organization and which is now working, taking lots of workshops and demonstrations, but you can see how, how, how they are working now. And letters can be eight. See, this is what the new generation where they are taking it. Not just calligraphy and not just typography, something beyond that. And that's what really touched me. And I found that yes, the next generation is taking this particular idea of a script on a very different level. And to make it more interesting, eatable, what more you want. So these are all Indian scripts and the word Akshara I written here for you. And that's all I wanted to actually tell you. Thank you very much.